grace and peace to you on this Good Friday from Pastor Eric and from all of Avery United Methodist Church. As we observe this Good Friday, we are at the culmination of our Lenten season that we've been going through for the last six weeks. We began on Ash Wednesday, and then over the last six Sundays, we have journeyed through the seven last words that Jesus says from the cross. Now, traditionally, examining the seven last words of Christ, the seven things that he said as he hung dying on the cross, traditionally that has been something that people have looked at on Good Friday in a long service examining each one of those last sayings of Jesus. This year we've done that throughout the Sunday worship in Lent, and we are almost done with that. And it's all coming into today. Now, when we think about Jesus' last words, as I've been saying this whole season, it's his dying words. It's the words he speaks from his deathbed, and we know when people we love are dying, and they have the chance to speak words from their deathbed, they say the things that are most important, the messages that are most important for them to share with others, the words of compassion and love that they know we need to hear, and it allows us to speak words to them. So over these next few minutes, we're gonna take a look at all of those words once again. Those seven last words, the, the dying words of Jesus, and as Jesus is there, on the cross, we're going to lean in and listen closely to those very important messages that he has to share with us. The first one is a message of forgiveness. Jesus cries out from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He may be speaking it to the soldiers or to Pilate or to all those who have physically laid their hands on him to get to the point where he is being crucified. He may be forgiving his very executioners, but indeed he's forgiving us too. The first lesson that Jesus gives us, or the first message that he gives us from the cross, is that we are forgiven. You and me, we're all forgiven. Second message from the cross is one that is spoken to the criminal hanging beside Jesus. He was crucified with two criminals, one on either side of him, being crucified as well. And one of those criminals said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. To which Jesus replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus prepares a place in eternity for this criminal and for you and for me. message from the cross that Jesus shares is to his mother, Mary, standing near the cross, his disciple whom he loved, which we know to be John, also standing near the cross. And he looked at the two of them and he said, woman, mom, here's your son. And John, here's your mother. Jesus is essentially telling them, now that he won't be around to care for each of them, that they are called to care for each other as family. A new family is created, those who believe in Christ. And so the message for us, as well as for Mary, is for us to care for one another. The fourth message, Jesus cries out and says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? These are some really interesting words that we often don't know why God would, why Jesus, who is God, feels forsaken, but he does. He feels forsaken by God. He feels as if God has left him all alone. And to us, perhaps the message is that even Jesus, even Jesus felt the absence of God. And yet, we know that God was with him on the cross. 
So even if he is speaking that feeling of absence, just like many in scripture have, and just as we may feel the absence of God, we may feel God forsaken. We may feel as if God has left us all alone. We know that we are God's precious children and will never be left or forsaken by God, even if we feel that way. Jesus' words that seem to be a lament are also words of hope and promise because God is with us even when we don't feel it. The fifth lesson that we learn from the cross is that Jesus understands and experiences human suffering. He says, I thirst. I thirst. I am thirsty basic of human needs, that of water to quench our thirst, and Jesus feels it. You know, we often think about Jesus as being divine, and he is fully divine, he is fully God, and yet Jesus is also fully human, and we see that as he suffers on the cross. He doesn't just pretend to suffer, pretend to be in pain, or pretend to die. Jesus actually felt all of the pain and suffering, even to the point of a dry, parched mouth that often is part of So when Jesus says, I thirst, it is a reminder to us that Jesus understands and experiences all of the human suffering and pain that's possible for us to experience. So if we've experienced pain and suffering and death, then so has Jesus. Jesus' sixth word is a word or a message of commitment and trust. He says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, or into your hands I entrust my life. Perhaps it's an invitation for us to, to think about what it would mean if we entrusted our whole lives to God's hands. We committed our whole selves to God. If we, too, could pray that prayer, Father, into your hands I entrust my life. Into your hands I commit my spirit. The final word, which we've not yet gotten to in our Sunday worship, but we will be getting to this Easter in a couple of days, is Jesus' message that it is finished, or it is completed. At the end of the day, as Jesus breathes his last breath, the last thing he says is, it is finished. The work here is done. There's nothing left for me or you to do. That's it's a tough message for those of us who value being productive to hear. But it reminds us that our faith is not about what we do, and that no actions that we take can save us. It's a reminder that a day like today is a day that only God can do. Salvation that comes in the cross is something that only Christ can give. We cannot save ourselves. It is Christ and Christ alone who saves us. Soldiers took Jesus prisoner. Carrying his cross by himself, he went out to a place called Skull Place in Aramaic, Golgotha. It's where they crucified him. And two others with him, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a public notice written and posted on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. Therefore, the Jewish chief priest complained to Pilate, Don't write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I've written, I've written. 
When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and his sandals and divided them into four shares, one for each soldier. His shirt was seamless, woven as one piece from the top to the bottom. They said to each other, let's not tear it, let's cast lots to see who will get it. This was to fulfill the scripture. They divided my clothes among themselves, and they cast lots for my clothing. That's what the soldiers did. Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene stand, stood near the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. After knowing, after this, knowing that everything was already completed in order to fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was nearby, so the soldiers soaked a sponge in it, placed it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When he had received the sour wine, Jesus said, It is completed. Bowing his head, he gave up his life. Clouds collide to come together, turning soft white into a dingy black. To walk up that hill to the place of the skull, following soldiers and mockers, and one who carried a cross for one unable to carry his own. was left to our own devices to do with him as we wished, to tear him apart, the clothes of a king, scraps of humanity scattered to the wind, bits of flesh off his back. On this dark and dreary day, painted in a bruised purple. Surely God had forsaken him, left him here, cast out of the womb, from the warm garden of birth and taken from the mother's breast and given to this humanity? But he no longer belonged to us. We no longer belong to him. To a mother, he said, this is your son. And to a son, he said, this is your mother. And at this point, they each went their own way. In this place, I stood up. The shadow of these figures pressed against the sky, like paper men cut out by scissors. And I saw myself as them. And all the moments of rejection, the stones thrown out from the quarry, polished in the pain and the suffering. And my own cross was too heavy to carry. The weight of my regret and loss pressed heavy upon my chest. The anxiety of wanting to make something more of myself was almost too much to bear. All of my work was a waste. All of my dreams nailed upon that tree. was too much for this crucified king who was made a victim for all of our crimes, a voice for suffering. We emptied our guilt upon him. He became a burden for our shame because we could not bear to take the blame.
because we had rejected God's gift of goodness. And looking up, Jesus cried out to God to hear only deafening silence, bashed and bloody, but bones not broken. He spoke his final words. It is finished. Completed. It was all he could do for us. He poured out his life for people who made a mockery of him. And he hung his head. Entering into the tomb where the light ends nothingness begins, no longer in the land of the living, but another entrance to be sealed shut, east of Eden, dissolving life.